we're just at the beginning of our hike to the Spanish Moss. And this is the view of Chef Town. This is gorgeous. This is so pretty. morning we are going to Chef Shallon. We've heard so many amazing things about Chef Shallon, so we're really excited to go and see the blue city. Supposedly there are 50 shades of blue in Chef Shallon. We are on the CTM bus or the CTM and we're not sitting together. I'm actually several seats ahead of Ryan. He is way back there somewhere. And good news, our bus is early this time. So our bus is supposed to leave at 9.30. We got here at 9.15 and they were already getting everybody lined up to get on. So I think it's gonna be a great day. All right guys, so we made it to Chef Shaolin finally. Uh, not without incident though, so apparently we were the only ones who were getting off at this stop and uh, we didn't know that. <laughs> we caused a lot of confusion on the bus because we were sitting in people's seats and I don't even know what happened, but finally the bus driver came and kicked us off the bus. Just kidding, he was super <laughs> nice. Uh, anyway, so we are here. We're gonna go explore. I will say this if you guys are sensitive to car motion I would suggest preparing for that because the bus ride up here was pretty pretty shaky I felt a little nauseous a couple of times. It was really pretty though. I liked it. Yeah Okay, so we've been told that when we get to Chef Shallon there uh, it, it, There are a lot of hills so we need to be prepared to climb a lot which we are But uh, right off the bat we're walking up a hill. I think it'll be worth it. We also forgot to mention that if you do come to Chef Shaowen from Tetuan, which we do recommend, uh, there is a, about a five degree Celsius temperature swing here. It is hotter in Chef Shaowen than it is in Tetuan. So be prepared for that. Okay, so we, uh, we came across this square, kind of, I guess, in the center of town. Um, we think it's kind of maybe like a good regrouping point where we're gonna figure out what our next step is. Um, yeah, but it's nice and pretty and peaceful and there's some shade here so if you find your way to Chef Shaolin climb up the hill stop here and figure out what you want to do next. For those of you guys who don't know Chef Shaolin's about uh, 550 years old. Um, in the 60s and 70s apparently this was a big uh, tourist destination particularly for hippies and those who enjoyed the uh, non-medicinal purposes of marijuana mm -hmm. if you will. Um, in fact Actually, a lot of marijuana is still produced and grown here. However, it is illegal to use it, consume it here in uh, Morocco, but a lot of it is exported to Europe. So, if you're in the Netherlands or if you're in Spain and you are enjoying some weed, pretty good chance that it came here from Chef Shaolin or the surrounding regions. So, anyway, just wanted to let you know, guys know that. Gotta say, that's not the history I was expecting you to focus on. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see the walls here in the uh, Medina are blue. Uh, in fact, Chef Shaolin is actually known as the Blue City, and uh, you can see why. Pretty much everything is painted blue, and there's some theories, different theories, as to why. Um, one of them is that the blue represents uh, being closer to God, being, being closer to heaven, so that's a popular one. Another one is that the blue, uh, it helps to detract from mosquitoes, which we mentioned before. If you watch our Castro de Odeas uh, video, we actually talk about the blue walls that were there. And then uh, the third one, which is a whole lot less interesting, is that the blue is actually just kind of mandated by the, the local government so that it attracts tourists. Some of the local cats here enjoying their morning sardines that were handed out by one of the villagers here. They went crazy for it. And the uh, Medina, you can see all of the very cute shops and beautiful scarves they have here and all of the blue. We are early for Morocco standards. It's about 11.30. Um, it's a Tuesday, so it's quiet here, but it's still very pretty. So there is a cast spa here right in the middle of uh, the city and it's closed. Not surprisingly, we were expecting it to be, but uh, it's really, really cool. It's a much smaller casbah than 
the uh, the Udeus Casbah in Rabat, or even the Casbah that's in Tetuan, which we haven't been in either. The Chef Shaun Casbah was built by Moulay Ali Ben Musa in 1471, the same year that Chef Shaun was founded. It was originally a fortress, um, so it looks really pretty inside. I'm sad that we can't go in. So we've been walking all over the place trying to find the Grand Mosque. We're sitting at a restaurant, we're right in front of the Casbah. And as we looked at the map, we realized that if you look right over here, that building that we've walked past a dozen times, that's the Grand Mosque. So we'll go over and look at that in a couple minutes. Built by Prince Mohammed Ben Ali Ben Rashad, the Great Mosque is behind me right now. It was built in the 1500s and it's one of the top sites to see when you come to visit Shefjan. So you can hear the call to prayer from the Grand Mosque behind me. It's actually really, really cool. You're looking at this beautiful view and hearing part of the uh, Islamic faith. So we're walking down this beautiful street that's uh, 550 years old. It's really incredible. We're walking from the Casbah to Ras Elma, uh -huh. um, which is supposed to be a really pretty waterfall that's not too far outside of the city um, but we get to walk back through the all of the shops and so many of the pretty walkways on our way there So just walking down this alleyway, um, you can see that there's some all sorts of handmade soaps and it smells so good and refreshing and beautiful and nice shops. Um, it's too, too bad this place isn't very crowded, too busy right now. Completely understand why, but uh, we can see why it's such a good popular tourist destination. So these, fount these fountains are uh, spread out all around the city. This is one of several that we've already seen. Uh, the really cool thing is this water is as fresh and clean as possible. It actually comes from the uh, springs in the mountains. So a lot of uh, times you'll see the residents cleaning their clothes or filling up buckets full of water to carry away. Well, it's not a guarantee. I think we might be one of the few Americans here in uh, Shashawan, but if you do come here, if you're from uh, an English-speaking country, there are plenty of signs. In fact, most of the signs that we've seen have all languages, or many languages, including English on them. So, you won't feel left out. So, as we're coming out of Shashawan, walking down this hill a little bit, you can see the uh, cafes along the water and the river. Um, the waterfall in the head of the, the stream, I guess, where a lot of people like to congregate and hang out, is right up here. However, our ultimate destination is this little white dot right over here. It's the Spanish Mosque. So that's where we're heading. We've got to climb up a pretty big series of stairs over there to get there. So I hope you can hear me over the water running here, but um, these are the, the waterfalls of the stream of uh, Ras El Mosque. You can see all the various hoses and things that are actually in the water. These are what's, I think, what's feeding the fountains that are inside of the city. So there's lots of them. They go to different areas, different locations, but the water looks really, really clear and just beautiful, really refreshing. Yeah, you, can, you can see a lot of the, uh, the locals here, the kids playing in the water. Some folks uh, doing some laundry, getting some clothes cleaned. It's just a really, really cool place. Really beautiful. We're just at the beginning of our hike to the Spanish Mosque. And this is the view of Chef Town. This is gorgeous. This is so pretty. So like Becky said, we're starting our climb up towards the Spanish Mosque. Um, you can see the city of Chef and back here behind me. What's really cool is along the border of Chef Shawin, you can see the Medina Wall. So it's a really, really wall, uh, cool wall that actually climbs up the mountain too. So it's beautiful, but quite a pretty scene to be able to look back over our shoulders and see Chef Shawin. So we'll see what it looks like from the top once we get to the Spanish mosque.
They're doing some reclamation repair work, beautifying project here. Uh, funny story, we ran across some wet pavement and didn't exactly realize it and stepped all over it and were instructed very kindly to get off. So our mistake, <laughs> and that's where we're going. So we made it up to the Spanish mosque. Um, I'm sitting in front of it now. You can see Chef Shawin back behind me. Uh, what's really extra cool and extra refreshing is that there's a whole lot of rosemary right behind me and it's just really, really fragrant. So sitting on, on top of this hill, by the way, it's very hot. Um, just enjoying the scenery and a little bit of breeze and just a really nice smell of rosemary. <music> So, the so Spanish mosque is here behind me. Um, it's not an active mosque, so actually I think visitors are allowed inside, although it looks locked right now. We're gonna go check it out. But uh, it's built in the 20s. Um, it fell into ruin just because there weren't enough um, worshipers that were coming up the hill, I guess. It's about a two kilometer walk from the Medina wall. Uh, it took us about 20 minutes to get up here. It's still worth it. I mean, this view is incredible and it's really nice to see this small little mosque here on the top of the hill too. So. Um, we recommend you, you should come check it out for sure. We're heading towards the Rift Mountains. We're gonna go do some hiking and some mountain climbing and explore the mountains up here. It looks really pretty. Just kidding. We're going to those two trees in the back right there. And that's as far as we're going today. If you find yourself coming up to the Spanish mosque, it's worth looking up the hill just behind it. Um, there's a couple of trees standing next to each other that provide a lot of nice shade. It's a really, really nice place to just sit down and relax for a few minutes and kind of just take in the, uh, the view. So we definitely recommend checking it out. Becky the Mountaineer. All right guys, so we are wrapping up here in Chef Shao and we had a great time today. And definitely worth the trip. If you're in Tetuan or if you're anywhere in the area, definitely come check out Chef Shao. Unfortunately, things seemed a little closed. I'm sure they would be much more open and uh, more vibrant. vibrant. During normal times, we understand why everything's closed. We know we're not seeing Morocco right now at the best possible time for tourism, but we still loved our visit today. Uh, we're just gonna wrap up and we hope to show you guys more videos soon. Bye. Bye. Stop here and figure out what you want to do next. Will you point out where I'm supposed to look? <laughs> here. Right. Here? On the left edge. Yes. Am I looking at the right place? Yes. Right here. Left edge, yes. Okay. All right, guys, so we had a, I think, a great time in Chef Shaolin. What do you think? Yeah. <laughs> uh, in any case, we're Start wrapping it. up. <laughs> Becky likes to play Pokemon with the doors here. She's got to catch them all. <laughs> so you can see a distinct line of blue uh, where the paint stops and the brown or the original color of the buildings is. And just above that line, you can see just a huge swarm of mosquitoes. So. Coincidentally, they're not actually dropping down to the blue. <laughs> That's a joke, by the way, guys. So, it's 9.02, and we're waiting for, wait, it's, um... It's 9.02 p.m. What is that? It's... <laughs> so, it's 21.02, and we're waiting for our 2040 bus and we're starting to get a little nervous. We thought that we'd wrapped our video up, but now you get an extra blooper. <laughs> and the bus is the blooper because it's very late. The guy said it was gonna be 10 minutes 15 late. minutes ago. Yeah, 15 minutes ago. <laughs> it's okay, I know things happen, things run late, mm -hmm. but uh, we were confused because we weren't, we weren't even sure if we were waiting in the right place. So luckily he came down and told us that because we would be panicking right now. So now you guys get to see <laughs> the real end of our trip.
<laughs> if the bus ever comes, we'll update you if it doesn't come. Yeah. But if we don't update you, the bus took us back to Tetuan. Okay. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> oh! That was like the heaven that sound. Yeah, thank you. Here's our bus. Hooray!